Welcome back for my program. Uh, we've been buddies for how long now? I don't want to date us too much, <laughs> but I think at least 15 years, at least. Right, right. Maybe more like 20. Well, yeah. Yeah, more than 20 actually, years, yeah, actually. 21 years. 21, wow, wow. We well, met in 95. Yes, 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 uh, yes. We met in 95. Um, great to have you here. Let me give you a hug. <laughs> Good friends. Um, that was a great presentation because today, the Korea is experiencing uh, one of the, the most difficult crises. Uh, I mean, outside is recently, the, the Britain is about to collapse, you know, it's getting out of EU, it's crazy, you know, economically. And what you have uh, showed us today is uh, really important because what is true globalization? And, and what is your take on the next 10 years? What's going to happen? So I think the next 10 years, you know, I, I read the newspaper like everyone else, and I think that the next 10 years, I think one of the largest risks we face in the world is geopolitical risk. I think that we have a fundamental uh, set of differences between cultures and between attitudes and between uh, uh, am and among people of different cultures and races that are uh, leading to some very troublesome, uh, very, very worrying trends in the world today. And you look at the Brexit, for example, I think it's reflective of the trends that uh, are really uh, more, uh, it's more retreating from living in a globalized world than it is more inclusive of, 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 uh, of, of living together with people who are different from you. Mm -hmm. For those who might want to work in U.S. or maybe Silicon Valley, uh, what is your uh, advice for Korean young people? Well, first of all, United States is an absolutely unique country in that it's open. It's literally open to anyone. Now that may change uh, in the future, but uh, I think the thing that makes it so incredible is that it truly is a salad, a, a melting pot, whatever you want to call it, of people, especially a place like Silicon Valley, um, you know, where literally anyone, it doesn't matter where they're from, what their color is, you know, as long if as they're 21 years old, if they're a college mm -hmm. dropout, or, as long as they have enough value to contribute to society, it will be recognized. And well, what are those key values? Tell us. <laughs> well, you know, I think in the world of at least Silicon Valley, I think those values are embodied uh, in impact to the world in the form of business. So this isn't, uh, you know, creating uh, NGOs or it isn't, uh, although th there are plenty of those as well in Silicon mm -hmm. Valley. Um, in fact, a very large number in, in Silicon Valley. Uh, but, but the bulk of a lot of the capital that's going into these, these businesses uh, are really betting on the fact that, that younger people, who on average, they tend to be younger people, can take a business and really transform it and, and create new value where value never existed. Mm -hmm. what, what would be your suggestions for Korean uh, young entrepreneurs or young uh, professionals or employees to um, prepare for Silicon Valley opportunities? First of all, I think the bare minimum is you have to be able to communicate. If you can't speak English, if you can't communicate in the increasingly the lingua franca of, of the business and academic world, that is a problem. And so I would say that's kind of very fundamental. Mm -hmm. Okay, Language. Language. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the other is a, uh, just a recognition of, of different cultures and uh, an embracing a different mindset. Mm -hmm. um, the other stuff I think is easy. Those How about IT knowledge? Computer programming, would that be plus? You know, I, I, I think, so I maybe have a, a I, I def first of all, I mean, I definitely think that computer programming and the ability to learn computer programming mm -hmm. at a younger age, especially, mm -hmm. is very important. Mm -hmm. I mean, when I grew up in the United States, we were given every opportunity to learn programming languages. And I think that was extremely helpful mm -hmm. uh, just in, in being able to be exposed at that young of an age. Uh, I do think that uh, technical skills are important. 
They're very important. I think even more important though is language and culture. Mm, no, mm, mm. But would, wouldn't there be a plus, especially for Silicon Valley, if you had how to, you know, if you knew how to program? Absolutely, absolutely. I, I, I think you know if you look at where most of the jobs and most of the opportunities are in Silicon Valley today, it is uh, you know for people who have technical specific technical experience. This is reflected in the fact uh, that I believe Stanford's now most popular major has become computer science. So younger people- Not economics. No, not economics, not, not political science, but computer science. Hmm. And so- The world has changed. The world has absolutely changed from where, you know, in terms of where the jobs are today. Mm -hmm. um, what do you see, do you think it's a, a short phenomena, short trend that this technology is taking over the whole world? Are, are you, or are you seeing that it's going to change the whole arena? That is a great question. And I think that it's easy sitting in Silicon Valley to think that technology is everything, technology is driving everything. Silicon Valley has its own echo chamber. Hmm. I think that right now what we've been seeing is an unprecedented kind of linking of internet, smartphones, uh, of, of basic uh, communication systems unprecedented. that are truly unprecedented. Now, whether that's going to continue and you'll be able to see as many opportunities arising from, from you know, these, these, these technological innovations, I think is, is yet, to be yet to be seen. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the impact of them, some may argue, perhaps has already been felt and, 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 and it will be declining. However, I think it would be a mistake to think that technological innovation will be unimportant in It's going to be more future. important, more important. Yes, I, I would argue that, that, that in fact, uh, the world we live in is changing more rapidly on a daily basis than it was 20 years ago. I mean, back in college, you know, at, at the time, either management consulting or Wall Street was the two major uh, career tracks. I mean, for, but you know, we had computers, but it was like, computer geeks or something like that. I mean, it was that there were, you know, we had like Bill Gates and yes, yeah, Steve Jobs, but we consider those to be only a few. But now, um, without technology, if you look at other areas, other uh, uh, fields, like, you know, economy and, and uh, all those, uh, you know, construction business, car manufacturing, it's, it's severe price competition and, and uh, the, the countries with cheaper labor costs will definitely win. So um, I think technology will play more important role and having no technological uh, uh, backgrounds or at least a uh, uh, little knowledge, it, you're in basically big trouble. Absolutely, I think today's world more than ever is one that involved on a day-to-day -day basis the use of technology that again is unprecedented in human <laughs> existence. <laughs> and I think that a knowledge of, of, of how the technology functions can only benefit uh, a citizen of the world. I mean, you grew up in California and you studied at Harvard and then um, you lived in Silicon Valley, you saw everything, and, and then now you're going back and forth between Japan and Korea. You're truly a global uh, uh, leader. And um, you say it's time to wrap up, but uh, um, what is your future perspective for your uh, goal for the next 10 years? You know, I mean, for me personally, I, I want to continue to, you know, to, to contribute to society, to uh, improve my own uh, mind, uh, my own experience base. But I'm, I'm truly excited by what I see as uh, an opportunity in, especially in Asia, mm. to embrace uh, the opportunities in front of, in front of us. Mm -hmm. I think that Asia uh, has a tremendous amount of potential in terms of talent, uh, in terms of uh, education and infrastructure, uh, especially in places like Korea and Japan. Uh, and I think that it would be very, uh, I'd be very happy to see uh, a lot of the things that are very positively changing in the world coming out of okay. these places. I have a last question. Um, the Koreans,
today, the young people, young generation is having a huge trouble finding jobs. And what is your last advice? I think that people always say this, but you know, I think you need to be creative. If you look at some of the early writers in the Great Depression in the United States, okay, and you look at kind of what came out of the Great Depression, there was a lot of great things that actually came out of the mm -hmm. Depression. And I think the most important thing that's come out of it is just this, what we call in America, Yankee ingenuity, which is a way to take something very little or, or nothing at all and, and make something out of it. And so uh, as, as tough times as this is, I think that it, it does require uh, creative measures. And if that means leaving Korea, for example, to look for uh, some other opportunities, uh, I think that, 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 that that's something that, that, uh, that would be worth considering. Mm. I completely, completely agree with you. And Korea is not the only job market. Learn the language, uh, try to embrace the different cultures, get out of Korea. That's my message and I completely comply. Uh, thank you for coming, Vic. This is a great honor. And uh, I hope uh, a lot of Koreans find you also helpful. And they, I hope you enjoy his uh, lecture. Thank you very much. 네, 안녕히 계세요.